In any case, I didn't know. And I simply had to. How often, after all, does one have the chance to chase a little child through a crowded city? <laughs> so I followed, quick on my heels, springing here, jutting there, more nimble than I remembered myself to be. And able, I found, to dodge cars, projectiles, insults, even birds. For I kept my little man in sight and had my eyes trained on the back of his dirty little head as he took one last corner. Last, I say, because he ran straight into an alley. A dead end. A callejón sin salida, as they say, somewhere. <laughs> as I approached the edge of the building that formed the end of that particularly dark, dank little alley, I slowed, paused, and peered my head around so as to not startle the child more than necessary. <laughs> he was right there, maybe 50 feet from me, looking this way and that under garbage can lids and large folds of cardboard in a frantic attempt to find his mother, I presume. <laughs> I slowly approached, arms open and wide, in a gesture of welcome and love, smiling faintly with my eyebrows raised. <laughs> this was, as far as I knew, a universal form of communication. <laughs> the little boy, having turned on his heels at the first sound of my footfall, now began his own approach, first quite cautiously, then with more determination. And then suddenly he was running at me, arms wide, eyes beaming, his face awash in a sunbeam, piercing the alley walls, his mouth now in a broad open smile, his breath releasing the most playful and beautiful little scream I'd ever heard. A flash of joy and youth and hope. And the moment my outstretched hand reached the leading edge of his tattered little shirt, he, he vanished in a flash. Gone. Well, now, that was a mystery. <laughs> Chase the things that run away. Your first rule, isn't this fun? <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, when things like that happen to me, I'm often as not likely to stand in one place looking at one particular spot on the ground and grind my teeth. <laughs> you do as well. We work the same way. Especially now that you're here at my place. Oh, my very lovely place. <laughs> you are my guests for this evening. And I'm sure none of us will be Disappointed. What is pale about this place? Blank stairs makes for pale and tired. <laughs> Make for the door. Make for a far off place. Cool and timid. Pale and lovely. It's a it's not for me to decide. And that makes my job easier. Where I grew up, the rain was dark and heavy. <coughs> dark and heavy. Dark and heavy. Dark and heavy. A kind of dark and heavy. Rain you don't see anymore. Dark <laughs> and heavy. Not here anyway. Dark and heavy. Storm clouds carried with them. Dark and heavy. Histories, worlds of dark and heavy. Histories locked in there. Dark and heavy. Embrace finally released. Dark and heavy. <laughs> to the dark and heavy earth. <laughs> Today's rains are quieter, lighter, and more superficial. <laughs> like everything, affected by the change in attention span. <laughs> Still, it took me years to learn how to pay attention to myself. Whoa! Ah, sorry I'm late. <laughs> As it turns out, ladies and gentlemen, it's easier to sink than swim. <laughs> What causes one man to think causes another pain and is nothing but still a third. As God is my witness, I am confounded by kindness and arousal and the irrefutable evidence of their existence in all but the lowliest of beings. And yet, apparently, many were spared their more nefarious symptoms, namely bliss, ecstasy, the higher realms. And we are therefore waiting, albeit limp, for our ship to come in. Any idea what I mean? <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Time for another little rule. Rule 44A. <laughs> Trick your body.
I'd like you all to try a little experiment. Think of it, if you will, as a free sample of the covenant. Now, I know you've all had scientific tests done on you before, <laughs> been subject to hours of ruthless interrogation and painful demeaning procedures before panels of experts. <laughs> but this is different. No one will be recording the results of this evening's experiment. This experience is yours to keep, and it's free with admission to tonight's special program. I'd like you all to hold out one hand, either one. <laughs> Just hold it out in front of you, where you can keep an eye on it. <laughs> and now with the other hand, if you have one, <laughs> gently reach out and give that first hand a push, a little nudge, as if encouraging it to go on its way. <laughs> and just watch what happens. <laughs> try it again, from another angle, or with slightly more force. Perhaps try sneaking up on that first hand a little bit. <laughs> again, just watch what happens. Allow yourselves to be neutral observers of this fascinating experiment. I think you'll find it to be a very, very worthwhile experience. An example of what is called staying power. <laughs> and what is meant by that is up to you. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> oh, there. There in the, in the middle of the room, where the rug stops, is a tin box with leather straps all over hinged and tearing. Some flaky thing spills out of the sides. A split seam. There are pictures in the box, beautiful ones, and we're all in them. Older ones from when we didn't remember much, from before the time of walking and words and our own choice of clothing. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and just remember, boys and girls, you're important, and everybody wants to be your special, special friend. You spend years and years just pulling your head out of the sand and smelling before you're ripe for the picking. <laughs> and still you'll persevere, wishing for rain, pickled by desire, and stuck in this hellhole for the duration. You run a tight ship, but there's no running away anymore. You're in if you follow me. This one's in for the night, purged beyond recognition and battle ready. Sure, you're tired, just like all the rest of us, but that doesn't mean we quit. No, there's life in these limbs yet, limbs and loins, and we'll wander the schoolyard before the day is through. It's harder than you know. <laughs> I'm just delighted you all decide to come. We're, we're very glad to be with you. And I'm sorry for all the noise. But now, we have something, don't we? This evening is dedicated to the present tense. You can feel it, can't you? It rises with every passing moment. It's the origin of sin, I think. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Last night, terrible and electrifying dreams visited me. <laughs> state as it traversed the night sky. At one point I felt compelled to get out of bed. For no other reason than sensing a presence or an imminent event of some kind, I was nervous. My senses on fire. But upon descending the stairs, I was left to stand alone and bewildered in the night, helpless and unaware of the forces at work. As I began to return to bed, the phone rang. It was 12, 12 a.m. 